Hey guys, I didn't put my ballot in the Welcome back to Network Africa. Here on Channel Television, we're covering all day the USA elections. We're looking at pictures from earlier today in New York. Uh, people casting their ballots at a polling booth in the city. Now, it seems that some Nigerians with American citizenship are overwhelmingly backing the Democratic candidate Hillary Clinton because of her concerns over, because of concerns over rival Donald Trump's views on immigration. In major cities like Washington, Houston, Dallas, and Los Angeles, Nigerian Americans are organizing programs to encourage Nigerians to go out and vote. Many people in Nigeria prefer Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton as the next U.S. president because they are concerned about a possible ban on immigration if her Republican rival Donald Trump wins. They fear the future of their relatives in the U.S. and the impact that this will have on their own livelihoods. With Nigerian recession and the cost of living rising, people are increasingly relying on financial support from relatives abroad. They're worried that life for their relatives will become more difficult under a Trump presidency. We'll be back to monitor the elections in the United States, but let's talk about other issues now. Spoken word artists are adding their voice to the rumbling conversations about the state of their country, from corruption to lack of development and the rising cost of living in Africa's biggest economy. Spoken word poets are talking about everything, while at the same time trying to grow the genre in Nigeria's literacy space. To shut up my mouth, keep things in the dark. It seems Nigerians are using any and every opportunity they get nowadays to talk about the state of the nation. The economy, corruption, leadership and the socio-political trends in the country are central themes in most gatherings, including the second edition of the Lagos International Poetry Festival. Through spoken word, an oral art form that is slowly finding its place in Nigeria, poets like D.K. Chukumerije, an Abuja-based lawyer, added their voice to a conversation taking place across the country. But while the message may resonate, the style with which it has been delivered is relatively new to many. It's not yet a genre that a lot of people know about, so sometimes it's difficult to attract funding. There's also the problem of audiences. Again, because it's a new art form, sometimes when you say, oh, come for a spoken word event, you're like, what's that? Nevertheless, literature and poetry are not new to Nigeria. While famous writers like the late Chinua Achebe, Ken Sarariwa and Wale Shoinka brought the country's literacy abilities to the world, some historians say poetry is as old as Nigeria itself, practiced long before it could be recorded in written form. However, spoken word, which is a uniquely style of word play and tone that sometimes incorporates other art forms like music, only recently started emerging in Nigeria's literary space and in other parts of Africa. 
This festival, along with other events and competitions, I away organizers say is helping spread the word and introduce spoken word artists from across the continent to each other. There really, you know, isn't any poetry festival of that sort, you know, in West Africa, which has a very rich heritage and tradition, you know, of poetry and of literature in general. So, yeah, so that, that's how it came about, basically, to create that space where young poets, old poets, poets in between, you know, across the continent, across the diaspora, across the world, you know, could come, you know, and um, have poetry engage with society on its own terms, as it were. I've been connected with a lot of different writers, some critics, um, visual artists um, from Nigeria for some years, most, mostly through social media. So it's been a pleasure to meet some of those people um, in real life and to just talk about literature and talk about the future of publishing um, with those folks and with the audiences that have come. 18-year-old Titi Layo Mabogunje won her first poetry competition dubbed War of Words when she was 15 years old. Now she teaches teenagers about the power of spoken word. Many of my poems speak about how there's so much corruption or injustice around or how people are selfish but then it all comes back to the individual and what you can do about it. So it's not necessarily about um, what has happened to you in the past or even what other people are doing to you in the present. It's more about how you can take control and change that situation. So let's you and me as... For these young people, the journey into the world of poetry has just begun. But the issues that face in Algeria today have been around for generations. Through spoken word, perhaps they can find a new voice to help grow themselves and speak out so those in power can help change things. Elsewhere on the continent, representatives from almost 200 nations are meeting in Marrakesh, Morocco, for talks on implementing the 2015 Paris Agreement on Climate Change. The Paris Agreement, designed to start in 2020, entered into force on Friday, the 4th of November, a month after reaching key ratification thresholds. 99 countries and the European Union have formally joined the accord. Our correspondent Ayola Kasim reports. With so much enthusiasm, many delegates arrived Marrakesh for the Climate Change Conference. It has been 11 months since the world agreed in Paris to limit the rise in global temperature to well below 2 degrees Celsius compared to the pre-industrial levels. And since then, there have been many good news. Many cities and businesses are making transformative commitment to carbon neutrality and 100% renewable energy. In October, the Global Aviation agrees a carbon offset scheme at International Civil Aviation Organization's Assembly. And after this, 140 countries agreed in Kigali, Rwanda, to reduce emissions of a hydrochlorofluorocarbon, a potent greenhouse gas used as a coolant in refrigerators and air conditioners. Unfortunately, experts warn these good efforts are not enough. Even if the Paris pledges are fully implemented, we'll put the world on track for a temperature rise of 2.9 to 3.4 degrees this century. So we can see uh, the massive ambition gap that's on the table as we come into Marrakesh. We need concrete results from the ministers and the Moroccan presidency by the end of next week. Can you please light your lamps? The Marrakesh Summit for Climate Change, titled COP22, is due to start writing a detailed rule book for the Paris Agreement. Nationally determined contributions now need to be integrated into national policies and investment plans. Support for adaptation needs to be given higher priority. And progress on the loss and damage mechanism has to be ensured to safeguard development gains in the most vulnerable communities. Negotiators will also be trying to find ways to raise finance to help developing nations cut their rising emissions and adapt to the effect of climate change. And so here at COP22, we need a very clear process for how we engage with this successful, hopefully, uh, facilitative dialogue, which is one of the tools we can use to have as a moment in 2018 so that we can uplift uh, ambition by 2020. As delegates meet here in Marrakesh, they are being reminded that for a real progress to be made, there is a need to scale up action on adaptation to the impact of climate change. They must also consider a deal on unavoidable loss and damage that vulnerable countries are experiencing.
Ayola Kasim reporting for Channels Television News. That's it on Network Africa. Thanks for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani.